Ready for chess yeah. lesson? Yeah. All right. So this is a uh, what's called a study that I created. Um, and I'm going to be putting more games in here. But this is Magnus Carlsen's insane openings. So Magnus Carlsen's the world champion. And for some reason or other, at the very highest level against, you know, super strong players, he plays these openings that are so insane and ridiculously bad that it's almost as if he's insulting his opponent. And um, it, it's almost as if he's insulting his opponent. And yet what's interesting to me, what I realized when going over this particular game, which happens to be the most insane one that I've seen, and he's playing against a very strong player, a player who could crush me, and Magnus Carlsen is playing against this guy. He plays the worst opening, but this relates to the point that having a bad plan, which is what Magnus Carlsen has here, is better than having no plan at all. So the opening is so crazy and bad that his opponent, who's a very strong player, makes good, normal opening moves, but they're sort of planless. He's not really, he doesn't really know how to react to Carlson's bad plan. So while he's making these normal moves that you can't tell, they all look like good moves, he's not, he's not adequately, he has no actual plan of responding to Magnus Carlson's plan. So the first move of the game, and Carlson's playing white, he's using this um, pseudonym, Dr. Nickerstein, which is what he uses on um, chess.com or, or one of these chess websites. Um, he makes this pawn a four, pawn to queen four, a pawn to queen rook four. And the point, imagine when you're a little kid, this is what little kids play, like who just learned the rules of chess. And what they want to do is they sometimes play this, sometimes they play pawn to king, rook four, and they bring the rooks out and they, cause they think rooks are the most important pieces other than the queen. And so they, they the plan is to bring these rooks out and maybe attack the king. And so Magnus Carlsen's playing this bad plan conceived of usually by seven year olds. And he actually sticks with this plan. He wants to bring this rook out the, the queen rook pawn, move it over and attack the black king. That's, it looks like he has no plan. So this guy, it looks like he's just making this the, the yeah. probably the worst it's move, funny, right? Hmm? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's. Like, I mean, I would no, never do that myself, right? Like, like a normal move would be this, okay, or this. Yeah, so, so yeah. normally the the correct plan in the opening is to con is a it's a fight for the center who has yeah. control of the center because then you can move your pieces yeah. around and so on. So okay, he does this move, and now right off the bat, Black makes a completely normal move and again this is a very strong player like a grandmaster level player happens to be you know he, he has a ranking that's you know the equivalent of a grandmaster and he makes a normal move which is pawn th this this pawn to um king sort knight of three defensive like trying to figure out what's going on maybe release yeah but rook. but but usually the idea is okay he's going to bring out his bishop yeah. he's going to bring out his knight he's going to castle his king's going to be safe and this is a normal move, but but it's actually even right here, I would say an incorrect move because very important in chess is to be prophylactic, meaning you look at what your opponent wants to do and you see if you can prevent it. So a correct move would have been this because if then rook here, the bishop would take the rook. <laughs> so this would have been a normal first move. And we'll look at a game. And so I then after you and I spoke yesterday where I described this game, I then played Magnus Carlsen's strategy. And this is, we'll, we'll look at a game where this occurred. And, but, but this would have been a normal uh, response, which is to be pr not only to, it has two purposes, take control of the center and also prevent Magnus Carlsen from executing on his plan. So you always want to do two things with one move. And, but anyway, he does this move, normal move. You can't criticize it. And by the way, this is the only time I've seen the computer uh, on the white's very first move. White already has, a negative position. Usually white, no matter what first move he makes, white made the first move. So he has a naturally, you know, slight lead in the computer. But in this case, uh, and we won't look at the computer too much, just at the key points, because the computer is a little ridiculous sometimes. So the computer already though doesn't like this move. He uh, black does this, which is normal. And then white does this a completely ridiculous second move to move the rook in so early in the game. There is almost no point but, in doing but he's this. Safe though, right? I mean, well, no, because um, you know, again, black can do this, 
attack the rook. The rook will have to move twice in the opening. So there's a very important rule in the opening, which is don't move a piece twice in the opening because while you're moving a piece twice, your opponent is getting all his pieces out one at a time yeah. and then can have a faster attack against you. So, but now, um, uh, so here's what happens. Uh, Black does that, uh, which is a normal, again, perfectly normal, good your, uh, second move, brings his knight out. You're supposed to bring out your, develop your knights first. There's a, an opening rule, knights before bishops. And then Magnus Carlsen does a very fascinating second move, which is also ridiculously bad, but he has a plan. And there's an actual, re and his. I think his opponent doesn't realize that at this stage, after two ridiculously bad moves and about to be a third ridiculously bad move, it's actually part of a plan. So he moves his rook to here. And that looks like, why did he move his rook there? But if you think about it, there's a very specific reason he moves his rook there. And, and, and it all is part of a bad plan. But if you have no plan, we'll see. Trying to get the queen then? Well, no, he's trying to... He's basically... His plan is to use this rook to eventually attack the black king. Yeah. And, but why did he move his rook? And why did he move his rook there? And to the, to the casual observer, and maybe even to his opponent, there might be no reason he moved this rook. But when I examine this a little more deeply, there's a reason not only why he moved the rook, but why he moved the rook there. So first off, he wants to develop this knight um, because this knight is going to be eventually, he'll move it to here and use it, possibly the plan is to attack the black king. So he needs to get this knight out. But if he if he left his rook on the original square that he had it and moved his knight out, now his rook is blocked yeah. from yeah. Completing, completing its plan. So he has to move the rook first. Now, why not here and why not here? Well, we know why not there because the knight wants to go there. We, he can't put it here because eventually these pawns do want to come out to get the bishops out and so on. So he can't move it here or here. Uh, he can't move it here because he wants to get this rook out. So he can't block his own rook's pawn. And here, uh, there's he could have maybe done here, but maybe he hasn't decided where he, if he wants to put his bishop here like this guy is doing, or he wants to put his bishop out here. So this actually turns out to be the only viable logical square for his bad plan to move that rook. So even at this point, every move he's made is ridiculous, but it's part of a cohesive bad plan and uh black makes a normal move he develops a piece he's getting ready to castle and make his king safe now magnus carlson develops this knight again the knight would have blocked the rook but the rook goes here again it's all part of a cohesive plan now black has accomplished his little plan which is to get his king to safety but it's he's done nothing to really react to magnus's plan so now now, again, ridiculous move. He's, he's done nothing to control the center, and he's moving the king rook's pawn now. And But it's still part of a plan. Like he's, His plan is to basically open up this, this file here and use this rook, maybe even put this rook here, and attack the king. Totally cohesive, logical plan every step of the way. But here's the thing. Let's look at what the computer says. The, so every point that the computer evaluates. So the computer evaluates as, as negative 2.7. So negative one would be if, if white was already a pawn down, like if white had accidentally blundered a pawn, it would be negative one. If he had accidentally blundered two pawns, it would be negative two. So even though there's just four moves made and there's been no blunders, the computer is, is basically thinks that Magnus Carlsen's position is almost the equivalent of two and a half or three pawns down. That's how bad the computer thinks this is. Um, but you would think then the opponent should be able to win easily. At that point, a grandmaster level player should be able to win easily. But let's see what happens. So now um, Black is uh, rationally making good moves, developing um, his center, but he's not really reacting to Magnus's plan at all. So now... Continuing the plan, so consistent, he's going to open up this this um, rook file yeah, and attack. Yeah, he's about to get taken out, right? Yeah, he's well, about to get there, though. He yeah, like twice over. Right, so he'll maybe put the rook here and start attacking. 
Who knows? But the computer hates this. It doesn't even matter. He's having a logical plan. Again, having a bad plan better than having no plan at all. Um, he figures black figures. OK, let's let's huh? push the night around. But it's still better than moving a piece twice in the opening. He should have maybe just pushed upon or developed a night. Instead, he's doing this move. So let's see what Magnus does. So Magnus is to keep Magnus's plan going. He's even willing to give up this piece like black could actually take this piece. And the computer says this is the best move, in fact. But black is so confused about what Magnus is doing. He's afraid to make a move that puts him a piece ahead. Uh, there's actually no good reason not to take that piece. So he's he's scared. Um, so he but, just responds. Yeah, OK. All right. I'll he take takes he, he takes the pawn back, which is still, by the way, computer still thinks this is the best move um, and, and, and that black is winning. So uh, uh, oh, let me turn off the computer for good reasons. You don't want to look at the computer too much. Um, OK, he moves the night back. He's he'll he'll figure out another way to get that night out. Um, now, OK, this move is a, OK. It's it's harassing the Rook. Rook's forced to move a third time while at the same time he develops his piece. Uh, uh, Magnus now potentially attacks the piece, but it's defended by this knight. So he's he's sticking sticking to his plan. Now, Black continues his development. A good move. All of the all of Black's moves, by the way, are good, fine, acceptable moves. All of Black's moves are bad. The difference is black has this plan and, you know, I'm sorry, white has this plan and black, maybe we don't really know what his plan is other than developing his pieces. So now he's thinking of another way to bring the knight out. So he opens up this square and now the bishop can also come out. Uh, he brings his queen out. It's not bad, but not great. Uh, he develops his knight. Now, this is a bad move. What, what Black does here, Black, Bishop takes Knight, is a very bad move. And the reason yeah, is... You just lose it to the pawn, right? Well, right. But it's a, it's a you know, Bishops and Knights are considered equal, equally strong. And so normally this would be a fair exchange and it wouldn't be a bad move. The reason why this is a bad move is when when one side... And this, you can make, think of the analogies in, in life too. When one side is strong, you don't you don't get rid of your advantage. So black has been making these what seems like these bad random moves, whether or not they have a bad plan behind them is an, another point. But black's advantage is, is that he has these all his pieces are developed, like compare this bishop to this bishop, the equivalent bishop. This bishop is is not has not moved at all, has no ha, is incapable of moving. And this bishop is a, is a good defending piece and attacking piece. Yeah. White's plan is to attack. Don't trade a defender for no reason. Um, so any trade here makes Magnus's position better. It makes it, it, it makes these bad moves seem better than they are when there are fewer pieces on the board. So that's a bad move. And and now look, black uh, white has this rook is actually looking a little stronger now. It has more spaces to move and it's looking directly at Black's king or maybe it can move here and look directly at Black's king. Now the bishop could come out this way before it couldn't come out and Black traded one of his strongest pieces for a piece that was not so strong. Um, so he develops his pawn. Now we're getting into a situation where it's starting to look good for white even though white has had this ridiculous plan. Yeah, this night it's kind of weird it, because uh like if you think about white's position on a defensive like if i just happened into the game right now i would think that white's doing all right <laughs> yeah because maybe maybe um these rooks are going to start to get more powerful than originally thought now this night this is a very strong square for this night um we'll see this in a second but the knight can't easily if the knight goes here what does that's a very strong knight. That becomes the strongest piece on the board almost. Yeah. Um, and the problem is black can't reasonably get rid of it. So let's say black were, let's say white's knight yeah. was to go I mean, here. Sometimes you make that choice. You like, you know that you could lose that piece, but then you would take the other one. So right. And, and also, again, if black were to, let's say the knight were to go here and black were to take it. It's again, an example of this piece was defending the king. 
he's giving away a defensive piece for a piece that was yeah. just born basically. And it increases the strength of these rooks when he does that. So white will have two rooks attacking the king and only this bishop will be defending it. So let's see what happens. So again, a reasonable move. Oh, let's develop the rook. Let's okay. bring it to the center of the board. And yet that rook, I believe that rook almost never moves again. And it's the equivalent of having no plan other than, oh, I read this in a book once that I should develop my rook. Meanwhile, every move Magnus is making is consistent. So he puts his piece on the strong square and he takes it. But once again, as I mentioned, this strengthens White's center, Magnus's yeah, center. And, yeah. and now he removes an important defender of the king and he unleashes this bishop on the king. Now the bishop has nothing in the way of the king, so, uh, between itself and the king. So Yeah, but he, he can't go there yet. He, he actually potentially can because if he goes there, bishop takes bishop, Rook takes, but it might be too early. Good to build up the tension rather than and now, and now Black brings a Black starting to realize what's happening. Oh no, my king is going to be attacked. So he brings a piece over to the king. But notice this knight can't get into the game because if he goes here, pawn takes because because he had done knight takes and pawn takes earlier. This knight is blocked from actually entering into the king side to protect his king because the pawn stops it. If 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 knight were to go here. Pawn takes knight and white's winning. Um, but by the way, despite all this, the computer doesn't really understand what's going on. The computer, well, no, actually the computer thinks white is actually magically ahead. This is the first time in the game that uh, ever since the knight came out, the computer has, has th thought that white is doing okay. So let's see what happens uh, next. So now rook, again, rook here. Let's continue with the plan. We're going to, this is called doubling rooks. It makes them stronger. And we're looking right at an open file aimed right at the king. So we're almost getting to the point where Magnus can start thinking about checkmate. Meanwhile, Black's made all normal moves, but he just has no plan. Um, he so, so let me, uh, can I stop you there? Because I know we were talking about this yesterday also. Yeah. Um, it, it was an irrational... Uh, opening which like legitimately set the opponent off off their kilter like they they're making reasonable choices but um are, at this point are they trying to like figure out what the hell is going on is yeah now now at this point black, it looks like black has figured out what's going on which is why he's trying to Bring his yeah, but pieces. He's already way disadvantaged. So look, some of the pawns haven't even been moved yet. Yeah, and every except for this bishop, every single and well, actually the queen too. These three pieces are attacking the king, and this piece is the only defender. He Black's trying to bring more defenders into the game, but they actually can't get to the king. Magnus has blocked them off from the king, and with the opponent's help. So every move Black has made has been reasonable, but White has had such a consistent plan, even though it started off ridiculous and even though it was a bad plan, Black did nothing. You have to be, part of your plan when you're playing chess is you have to stop the opponent. You have to do things aggressively, but you also have to stop the opponent from doing what he wants to do. Black, Black had no idea. Black assumed Magnus was just doing nothing. He didn't realize there was a plan. And so he did nothing to stop white from this plan. Now white has this amazing attack on the king after making these ridiculous moves. He was so consistent with his bad plan, that the bad plan actually worked so far. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, uh, uh, but it's interesting so far. Now, the other thing is, is that, um, well, all right, let's see that. Let's see the next move. So, Black does realize what's happening. He wants to now, he brings his pawn up because he wants to maybe stop the bishop from going here because pawn takes, but also maybe he thinks the rook could come here and start to defend. Uh, but this by itself now, he's being forced to make weak moves. This is not such a strong move. He's being forced to make weak defensive moves because now he's realized, uh-oh, the world champion is about to get close to checkmating me. <laughs> And so he's making very defensive, passive moves now. And, and again, this is a grandmaster level player 
that who's the opponent. And, you know, it's very interesting because it's almost as if he didn't really understand chess so well because it looked like Magnus's moves didn't understand chess. But like, for instance, this move here a few moves ago where he did night takes, he did night takes night. This is a very bad understanding of what's going on in the position. He took yeah, his most defensive piece. Hmm? In retrospect, he would leave that there because he's protecting both the rooks and the king. Right. And, you know, I could see what he wants to do. He's like, okay, this guy, he doesn't want this guy to come in, but this is a very strong defensive piece. And he's been, consi and every piece that gets off the board makes these rooks stronger. A general rule in chess is that rooks become stronger the fewer pieces are on the board. So uh, every time he did something like that, you know, showed a kind of a, he didn't really understand what was going on, which is odd. He, like you said, he was off kilter. It's, it's so odd for a player of this strength to almost not understand what is happening at a, a deeper level. You know, chess is not really a game of move versus move. It's a game of, of philosophy versus philosophy. So I could have a life philosophy that, uh, I should have pleasure as much as possible. You know, he, a hedonistic philosophy. Or someone else could have a philosophy, uh, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to have good values, I'm going to have, you know, create, create value with my work and have a strong family and get, instill good values in my children. And then at the end of their lives, you see who has the better life philosophy. It's the same thing in chess. You have, you have to have a philosophy and it's sort of philosophy versus philosophy. And Magnus' point here was my bad philosophy of just bring the rooks over uh, seems to have worked out in this case versus normal developing chess. So, okay, he, he brings his rook over. He makes that defensive move. Uh, now, he, so, okay, very important, this next move. So, so Magnus is very good, and all strong chess players are very good at this, but Magnus Carlsen is the best chess player in the world. Sometimes you have to switch plans midstream because your opponent does something that either makes your plan better or worse. So you have to slightly pivot plans to, ha to have a better plan. So we don't really know what Magnus's next intention was, but Black made this incredibly passive, weak move. Now, what I'll just ask this as a question. So I'm and, wondering and, why they would do that, just to support the pawns at that point? No, he's, he's thinking, okay... Like white that, is that, that, white, white is trying to penetrate into in actually invade the uh, black king. Notice there hasn't been any invasion yet that Magnus has done. He's just moved his pieces around. Now he's thinking of invading. So how does black defend? Well, he's got to get his rook here, maybe his bishop back, or that might not be good. But he's got to get his rook here and and defend this square potentially. So so white black did this to get his rook potentially in the game oh, I see it. to defend. But there's an important weakness. And, and I'll ask a question, but what is the weakest aspect of making this move? There's a, there's a very critical thing that Magnus instantly changes his plan slightly to take an important adv uh, advantage of this new weakness that Black has. So I would say that it blocks the Rook, right? They well, the Rook was already blocked, though, so it tries to actually make... Oh, not some... the Rook, the, um, the Bishop. It does block the Bishop, yes. But, but notice... The bishop was already blocked by this pawn. So it doesn't really unblock the bishop. But yes, maybe maybe that, that could have been an idea. We don't know. Uh, but, but there's an important thing that happens, which I'll, I'll say now, is this king, this, this pawn was in some ways protecting the king. And now, uh, now that it's on this move, this diagonal is, is open. Okay. Now, it doesn't look like the bishop could take advantage of that. So normally you would put the bishop out there to, to check the king, and that would, black would be in serious trouble. But this right. pawn and this pawn are in the way. So Magnus says, okay, well, there's another piece that could potentially get on this diagonal. And so let's, let's suddenly, we're going to switch plans a little bit. He does this, not to, it looks like the move of this, the, oh, it looks like, sorry, it looks like the intention of this is to mess up black's pawns. But we'll see the real intention in a second. So Black takes the pawn, and Magnus, he sticks with his plan. He ignores the fact that Black just take, took that. He sticks with his plan. Boom. Now the queen, which two moves earlier, have been locked in, in at home. This is like home, um, 
you know, uh, what do you call it when a, when a prisoner is sentenced to his home uh, for jail? House arrest. Yeah, so this queen was in house arrest, but now suddenly the queen, in its very first move out of the home, is, attack, is taking advantage of not this only, critical weakness. Not only defending, but in check also. Yes, yeah, so now because of this weakness, Magnus slightly changed his plan, mm -hmm. got the queen into the game. So now we look at the pieces that are attacking the king. This piece, this piece, this piece, this piece. And the only defensive pieces are this, perhaps this. But now this rook, which is such an important piece, its only job now is to block the queen from the king. The ki this piece is yeah, acting so there's like... No, there's no attack left for black. Right. And in fact, this piece can't move. It's called yeah. this is called a pin. When if, if this rook ever moves, the queen, you know, of course, is looking at the king. You can't it, it takes the king. So it can, the rook can't move. So now Magnus has the, all his strong pieces in the game. Maybe this piece is not yet in the game. That's it. And the queen, the rook, even the bishop, the bishop is the only piece left defending this king versus the queen, rook, rook, bishop. So bad plan, better than no plan. So now he, he, now he can take his time, by the way. Black, notice Black can't move any of his pieces. This yeah, rook is not... Because if I'm understanding the way that you're talking about it correctly, um, Black sacrificed some of the key players without, without having their own plan. Right, and he actually... They were and, like on the defensive from the beginning, right? Right. And Black didn't actually lose any. He didn't sacrifice in the sense that he lost a piece, but he sacrificed. But by not realizing till too late what Magnus's plan was, he made moves that didn't really help him out. He, he sacrificed important time where he could have been defending himself until it was almost too late. We'll see if it's too late. But at the very least, I prefer playing this position to Black's. And again, which piece can move? So this rook is legally not allowed to move because, you know, it's blocking the queen from the king. This knight can't move here because it's pawn takes knight. Can't move here because of pawn takes knight. The queen can only move maybe this way, um, but can't really get to the king. This rook has no good squares to move to. This bishop can move, but what's if it moves here, then the rooks will take it because it can't do king takes rook because rook takes... Uh, uh, you know, if the bishop goes here, rook takes and it's going to be checkmate and a king can't take because it's defended by the rook. The bishop, the bishop can't move to here because again, rook check and it's going to be checkmate one move later. Um, and the bishop can't move here because, oh, thank you. I'll just take it. <laughs> so the bishop can't move. The rook can't move. This rook has no squares. The knight can't move and the queen has no good squares. Meanwhile, white pieces are all over the board they can move anywhere so the queen so now at, at, oh i see okay i was gonna say like the next position then is the actual close right well we'll see we'll see what we'll see what happens so um so now black's thinking oh my gosh i'm in big trouble if i don't do something fast this queen rook rook bishop are all gonna combine against my little king and checkmate me so the queen says, hey, Magnus, how about we just trade queens? Equal trade. We'll do it. OK. Look, and but literally what we were talking about yesterday. <laughs> right. And like and Magnus is saying, listen, now that my queen is looking at your king, I'm not there's no way I'm going to trade with you. Like your queen is useless compared to my queen. So Magnus backs off. Okay. No queen. And, and by the way, now Magnus has time. He has time to to do anything because black can't move. So he's just going to improve his position. And while, while Black tries to figure out how to save himself, but White, White knows I can just improve until I'm ready to attack. So now Black goes here and he's threatening to do queen takes pawn check. He figures maybe that will distract Magnus a little bit. Whoops. Uh, so Magnus just, again, Magnus has no worries. Uh -huh. He's like, oh, he yeah, says, oh, he's threatening something. No problem. I'll just defend because none of these pieces can move. So Magnus just, he has nothing to worry about, whereas Black's desperate to create some tension. And so I don't know why Black did that. He has no other move. He just makes a random, this kind of a random move. He has nothing to do. And so 
uh, now, again, White improves his position. He says, okay, well, nothing can stop me now from invading. This is the first actual invading move White makes. And he's just improving. Like now, if the bishop moves somehow, then the queen will take this rook checkmate because the rook is also defending. So again, he's doing a squeeze, a squeeze play. He's defending when he needs to. And then when Black makes a random move, he Im improves his position more to get ready for an attack. So now the king is, he has nowhere to go. He's, he's like, I'm just going to try to run away. That's my best plan. And, and, it's, and actually, according to the computer, when I looked at it later, White has a checkmate here. But Magnus is like, he's not even so, he doesn't even look at it. He just says, okay, well, the king made a random move. I'm just going to develop my, I'm going to get my final piece. This was the only piece sitting at home. I'm going to get my final piece out here, and it's, it's, it's ready to attack the king. So, uh, so now he goes here to try to get the knight defend. Now white gets into the game. Nothing's defending this rook. And if the rook notice, if the rook move, like, so this bishop and this queen are well, attacking the rook. They would take it. But if the rook moves, let's say, let's say the rook moves here, which is a normal move. Well, now uh, takes the knight. King can't take the bishop because queen takes king. So, uh, so the so the black rook is lost, and 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 Magnus is is actually winning. But then we'll see what happens. So now now white is officially winning. All right. Because, Can you go back to um, why wouldn't the rook just take the bishop? All right, all right. So go move the bishop. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, and then oh, see. Okay. Yeah. Why wouldn't the rook just take the bishop at that point right there, right now? Okay, because yeah. uh, queen takes rook. Oh, I see. And then, well, so, and then the diagonal is there. Okay. Yeah, and also, um, it's very important. Rooks are more valuable than bishops. So at this point, because Magnus traded a bishop for a rook, Magnus is ahead in material. You know, he, he, and so at this point, if that, if that happened, and by the way, that might have been the best move to avoid checkmate. Um, but if that happened, now White's plan will switch again, and he'll try to exchange queens. Because he's, once you're ahead in material, you try to actually liquidate the position down as fast as possible because you're, you're, you're winning. So the, when there's fewer pieces, it's easier to actually now queen a pawn, you know, get a pawn to the other side and, and queen it. It's easier to win with less complications. So we'll see that happen in a second because the reality is uh, he, now Magnus took the other rook instead and Magnus is officially winning. So he backs off. He no longer wants to checkmate. His now he switches plans. He's gonna he's gonna just trade off all the pieces and then win what's called the end game because he has more pieces. He, he has stronger pieces and more pieces than the other side. So uh, now he, he castles his king to safety. He's no longer trying to checkmate. He switches plans completely. Um, now he wants to trade queens because with queens off the board two rooks and a bishop yeah, rook. versus a yeah. rook and two things, he's going to win the game easily. This is a trivial win. But so Black realizes that he doesn't want to exchange queens now. Why he not wants... do it again then? Hmm? Why not do it again? Like after the queen moves, why not move it right there? Um, why not move this queen? Yeah, into take the rook. Uh, oh, well, then, the, then um, queen takes queen. So now the queen. I know, is, but like if you were willing to sacrifice. Oh, but now um, the queen is much more powerful than the rook. So Magnus would never. This would be an unfair trade for Magnus. You could actually go to the left side too. And take right. One. He could take this pawn maybe. Or um, the other one too. Yeah, he could take that. I mean, black. Right. And look, look at like, you know, again, there's 64 squares on the board, and white basically controls all of them. And and look at where all of black's pieces are. <laughs> That's how coward that, you know, huh. and at this point, again, white just wants to trade pieces and uh, uh, and go into what's called an end game and maybe get a queen to the other side of the board. I mean, get a pawn to the other side of the board. It turns into a queen and then I'll check me. So that's his plan. And black is just now here's what black's plan is. Um, he wants to maybe have his own attack, maybe against the king. But there's just no no. Whoops. There's just no way to do it. So um, white goes here. He's protecting his king and maybe threatening stuff. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, 
He tries to make things complicated by the pawn is attacking the rook. He just stays safe. Everything now is safe. So he goes here. He takes a pawn. Why not? And now Black is desperate to get his pieces out. He just does his, his knight is like buried. Remember, the knight started on this square and now it's still there. It, it made a huge journey and now it's back to this square. So he says, okay, I can get my knight out. And now wow, White switches plan. Jump behind. Okay. Yeah, White switches the play one more time. Like, can you see what White might do, what the world champion might do here? I would think that you would move the queen to the backspace and create check there because there's no reason not to. Yeah, queen here, yeah. checkmate. That's checkmate. Boom. Game is over. So, That's again... That's pretty quick. How many moves was what is that? Uh, yeah, good question. Um, it was pretty quick. 32 moves, which is relatively a, a, a small game. So yeah. uh, uh, again, to summarize, every move, even though they look bad, like a, a child would only make some of these moves, but every move was so consistently a plan. And it started off as a bad plan, and Black unconsciously made it a good plan. And Black was making good moves, but he had no plan. And it's a great example of how a bad plan is better than no plan. Uh, it's a beautiful example of that. And then it's also a good example of, hey, um, when once Black's pieces couldn't move, they were all sort of locked up. Magnus took his time of just improving his position before he did the final yeah, attack. You can look at his opening position, though. He's still pretty much um, like his, his pieces are stable. Yeah. But this is not so stable, like because it could get poked around, uh, and and you don't he doesn't want to lose the rook. It would only I, get poked around though if, um, if Black was more aggressive. Yes, or if Black played, if Black understood, like for instance, let's see, it let this is an okay move, and then every move White's making, by the way, is a bad move. Like even though this looks like a strong attack, the king is safe here and these were all good moves if we look at what the computer says the computer says the computer thinks white is three pawns down even though white is not any pawns down but the computer just thinks white's position is losing and furthermore the, the computer thinks here you can, we can see the lines the computer the computer thinks that black should just take this piece there's no he just thinks uh, sorry yeah black should take this piece white is just totally losing so, but perhaps, perhaps the right strategy would have been get the rook knight out, get the bishop, you know, let's say this, uh, and then maybe keep this pawn here so that the rooks can't penetrate. And then... Yeah, that's kind of curious, though, because what you're saying is that black... What, I don't know if the... I mean, they lost the game. So they failed because they weren't, uh, they didn't have a an opening strategy to com compete with, right? He did not like understand the sensitivity of the of the initial moves. Like, what's that? I don't know how to deal with it. And then, right. So it made it made what it, he made what he thought were normal good moves because he figured, yeah, oh, if I just make a conventional game against an uh, unconventional approach, right. And why was this approach unconventional? Well, well, first of all, it's the worst, you know, White started off with the worst possible opening move that could be imagined. And then he, it looks like he's just mindlessly moving his rooks around for no reason. But we saw even on the, on the third move, there was an actual reason he put the rook on this square. Yeah. And then the next move, there's an actual reason he brings out his knight. Now there's an actual reason he brings out this pawn because he's going to, He's going to open up the file and pretty and creative because basically uh, having walked me through it, he won the game in the first four moves. Yeah, because I, I would say and look, the computer still thinks doesn't really understand what's going on either. The computer still thinks blacks massively ahead. And um, even though it's all consistent, uh, I'll just go quickly through and but look how consistent this all is like we're just, you know, now we're going to bring the night out to this very strong square and so on so i'll show you one more game real quickly but i decided right after you and i spoke yesterday i played a game using magnus's strategy 
just to see what would happen. Like what would happen if I had a bad plan versus no plan versus a good plan? <laughs> would my opponent be able to handle it? So um, I'm playing the white pieces. My opponent who, you know, there's all the, the number next to my name is, is and the, next to my opponent's name is the rating. So this person's rated 1800, which is a strong player. Like he's, what 1800 tells me is he's actually studied the game with books, maybe a teacher for a few years. He's probably played in tournaments. He's not a bad, he's not an, a bad player. Um, not as strong as me, but he shouldn't lose to my opening. He should crush my opening. So but I played the did same. Did you try that same? I mean, it looks like you tried the same opening, but w were you testing the theory? Yeah, I'm testing. The, I'm, I'm going to try to play exactly Magnus's plan and bad op the, the word play the worst move on the board and and try to um, move my pieces over you know the bad plan is move my pieces over to the king and attack but i'm going to start with move trying to move my rook or other pieces now black here played a much stronger move than the grandmaster in the prior game and i had to slightly you always have to be able to pivot plans yeah but adapt. so right you have to adapt so he made the move that the other guy should have made, which is now if I do this, if I put the rook out here, then he takes and I and my plan is over. So I can't I can't now do Magnus's move, but I can still keep the approach. So let's the broader picture of, of the approach is that I'd like to keep this third rank clean for as long as possible. So potentially later I could move the rook around. And the other part of my plan is. I'm going to try to attack in this weird way that confuses my opponent so much he doesn't realize what's happening. And I have to be ready to adapt just like I did just then. So I move this out. Okay? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Again, to try to uh, maybe open up this file. Again, this is Magnus's plan. So I'm, I'm adapting, but I'm keeping the same bad plan that Magnus had. And so he does a great move, which is appropriate. Let's control. White is not controlling the center. So black should control the center. So he made a very good second move. He's playing very good. Um, so I did this because, I'm, again, I'm trying to leave the third rank open and I'm trying to ha have him break down his center. So I'm challenging his, his center while I'm waiting for him to let my, my nice. rooks out. Uh, so he defends his center. If I take, he takes. Um, okay, so I figured Magnus developed this night pretty early to try to get it out there. So I'll do that. And the idea also is I'm putting a little pressure on the center. This knight could potentially I'm going to do something there, but I don't know. Um, he makes a good uh, move, just develop his pieces. Uh, I want to get this bishop out to try to confuse the game now. Now my approach is I can't do the Magnus, the exact Magnus plan. So I'm going to do similar, which is I'm going to be play in a confusing way, in a, in a confusing but very aggressive style to see what happens. So he correctly, That's a weird th this, is, okay. this pins my knight against the king. So what's happening is this knight can't move because the bishop takes the king. So he's threatening to do this. And then um, go with the bishop. he'll take he'll take my knight um, if, he, if he does this and this. That's what he's threatening. So I ignore that and just, I, I'm pinning his knight against his queen. If his knight moves, I'll take his queen. So I'm trying to play confusing. He does this. You know, and I'll, I'll, I'll go through the, this a little quicker. Now I get my queen out inappropriately early because um, I also you know, remember Magnus well, moved good. his queen out there. So I want to do the same thing. He wins. Oh, he, he protects his bishop because I was attacking his bishop also. And now I started, I have a, an idea which is I'm going to, I don't like what's happening. I have a very bad position. Let's see what the computer says. The computer thinks I'm the equivalent of five pawns down. So the computer thinks I'm dead lost, which I am technically. I'm going to, I'm going to lose this piece. So I need to, I don't like what's happening. So I'm going to transform. When you don't like what's happening in chess, you have to completely transform what the board looks like. So that's my next idea. So I do this and I'm just trying to open up files so that some pieces could come out and do some damage he takes my knight uh, i'll just go through this quickly and yeah. now i'm threatening he can't move the knight i'm threatening to do pawn takes knight he does a good move but i'm threatening this knight um 
So he threatens my bishop and we do, and here's what happens. We do an equal trade. I take the knight, he takes the bishop, but now I'll just go through a move quickly. You're kind of in, in the right spot. At the so, right, so now I've completely transformed the position. So instead of going for an attack on the king, I'm actually, I'm actually winning now because I got rid of a piece, but these two pawns can't be stopped. And so now I have a completely different plan, which is I'm going to turn one of these pawns into a queen. That's my, that's my idea. And then I'm going to attack the king. So I've completely, we, we gave, gave away all our pieces here. And what was left is my two pawns now have completely changed the nature of this game. So he has to defend against these pawns. So he moves his queen there to stop my pawns from moving. Um, and I'll just go through this fast. Both sides made some blunders. But now I have time. He's also threatening bishop takes pawn, queen. Eh. So he's threatening this. Um, he, he's threatening, if I were to make a random move, he's yeah, threatening this. It seems like it, maybe it's only because of your commentary, but I feel like he's already on defense. He's on defense because he's got to stop these pawns. When a pawn yeah, gets here, yeah. it turns into a queen. So what he's trying, but, but he, the move he makes is not bad because this move is, it, it accomplishes what I call the rule of two. It's attacking this pawn, but it's also threatening to go here. So he's threatening to do, if you can follow this, he's threatening to do queen takes pawn, queen takes queen. Well, why wouldn't he just take the pawn to get the, that out of the way? That might be the best move, but it's also worth looking at. Oh, like, yeah, and there's a uh, rook this, right behind this. This yeah, king you wouldn't moves. want to sa sacrifice if I'm black. I don't want to sacrifice my queen to that rook. Right, or or right, or he. Um, oh, that's right. Because if he takes that pawn, yeah. But so what he's threatening really is, um, bishop takes pawn. Oh, sorry, queen takes pawn, queen takes queen, bishop takes pawn, and it's check against my king. The king moves, and then bishop takes rook, and then if I move his pawn up. I don't know. He's still in trouble, but maybe he's thinking bishop takes pawn somehow or all these things. So he's, he's trying to confuse the issue. Um, but, I, but here's where we, we've talked about this in the last game. I have such a strong position now because I transformed the structure of the game. I could just make a defensive move and I could improve the position of my pieces. And, and I, I have more time now. Um, he allowed me to have more time. So now he's, he's, put his bishop out to defend against moving the pawn here, but I do it anyway. He gives up his bishop for a pawn. So now uh, I've got a rook here. I've got a pawn here. He had to do that. Uh, otherwise, I would have queened the pawn. And now he's bringing his rook into the game. So he attacks my knight. I'm just going through this quickly. Yeah. But now, um, hmm? I mean, you could do that. You could continue to press on that pawn to get get Right. Right. And now he could maybe have taken it. Maybe he should have. Like, it's still unclear. But now I make this move. He underestimated, just like Magnus Carlsen, when he put his knight there, he, it was such a strong move that Black had to exchange it. Look at what this knight does versus, let's say, his knight. My knight now looks at this, is it threatening this queen. It's also defending the queen from coming here. Check. It's also potentially attacking this. It's also defending this pawn. And it's also, if the pieces move around, it's also threatening a check. So this knight, and the knight can't be taken. So this knight now controls the entire board. It's maybe the most important piece on the board. So the queen, he's trying to cause trouble for me. He attacks this rook. The rook is undefended. And this would be checkmate almost. The queen could come back. But this would be a strong move. I let him do this. So I say, OK, no problem. I've got good situation. I'm just going to improve. Yeah. So you move at that point, you move the pawn forward. Uh, even better. And I just, because the pawn forward does right. It does block the queen. Well, but, it, it's a defensive move too, right? But he could take it and check me. So I don't want to give him any chances and I don't want him. To, I could even potentially let him do this and I'm still winning, but I said, Wait, okay, is that check me? So show me that. It, again. It's not, it's not check me, but it's check. So, if um if I go the pawn here, he he could take it. There's nothing defending that pawn, so he's he's looking at my king. And then I've got to move my king here. I'm still doing well, but maybe I don't want to risk that. It's too complicated. So instead of taking a risk, I make a very simple move. I this is where we talked about where if the other side can't really do anything, 
then you could just, before you do your final attack, you could just improve all your pieces. So I see he's attacking the rook. I move over one square. And not only did I protect my rook, but I'm actually threatening checkmate now by queen takes pawn. And then it's backed up by the rook. Uh -huh. So if I do queen takes pawn, he can't do king takes queen because now the rook is, is defending the queen. So that would be checkmate. So now he has to actually defend against checkmate, even though this has been such a ridiculous game. Um, so he does this. What's the problem with doing rook here is that now I can win. This rook was doing, this rook had an important job over here. He was defending the pawn from queening. So th this rook and this rook were stopping this pawn from queening. So now that I threatened checkmate and he defended this way, he loses the game because he forgot about his, the important job the rook was playing here. So <laughs> I do rook here. He takes and, the rook and then you get queened. Right. And now he can't do this. Whoops. Uh, he can't do this. Rook takes pawn because rook takes king. Yes. So this rook is pinned. And what if he goes back rook here? Well, then I have checkmate. So he <laughs> does the he does the only move he can do. That's funny. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, I go forwards. So um, first off, he tries to make things confusing. He attacks my queen. I could ignore this. You know, his knight came here and his knight's attacking my queen. He's confusing things. And, and I can't, this is important to notice. I can't do pawn takes knight because this pawn is what's called pinned the same way this rook is pinned. If I do pawn takes knight, his bishop is on my king. So it's a confusing. How much um, like, so you were trying the Magnus approach. Yes. Um, and then it seems like all hell broke loose after that. Right. Yes. How much when you're playing against another chess player, how much of it is the confusion on the other player's part? Like they 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 played a decent game, but then they ended up just in yeah not so a could, position of of strength. Right, and a, 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 the whole time. right. So a classic example is. This, when I threatened checkmate here, it's a strong reasonable threat. He had many ways to defend against it, but he was kind of flustered. You know, he had such a strong position before. He thought he was winning before. And so he forgot that the rook, this rook is what's called yeah. overloaded. He forgot that the rook yeah, had this so important job. I guess so he, even just in using this game as an, as an analysis, you have like a particular strategy that you want to pursue but then a lot of times you win because the other person made a mistake. Right. That happens an or, enormous amount of time. Or you make a mistake and then you're like, oh, shit, that right. shouldn't have happened. And so what happened here was I played a very, just like Magnus, I played a very unusual bad plan with that A4, rook A3, you know, and trying to do rook A3. And then I gave up a piece. You know, so I went over my game kind of quickly, but I gave up a piece to trip to make these pawns over here and very confusing game. Um, again, starting with the Magnus strategy, but I had to adapt to uh, an even more confusing strategy. And I'm not saying I playing like Magnus. I made some bad moves as well, but he made more bad moves because he was so flustered by what was happening. He gave up a winning position with that move and and I'll just go through this, like, you know, so, okay, but by the way, then there's one more thing that happened that was interesting. So, okay, so a uh, few moves later, he's still, you know, now my rook's here. He defended his king. Well, against my rook. at that point, he's still on the attack, right? Yeah, he's, he's potentially on the attack. He thinks he's defended, but he missed, he missed some critical things. So I could take this bishop. He can't take back with the rook. If he could take back with the rook, he could stop the pawn from queening. But what happens if he takes back with the rook? He forgets again, this is checkmate. So he has to take back with the king, and now I make another queen. And so now I'm massively ahead. Yeah. So now, by the way, I, according to the computer at this point, I looked at it later, I have a checkmate here, but I switch plans now completely. So just like Magnus did, once I'm ahead in material, and here I'm a queen and a couple of pieces ahead. I have an extra queen. You know, I have two queens. He has one queen. We each have one rook, but I, then I have two extra pieces. So I'm so massively ahead that I could just liquidate all his pieces. I'll trade this rook 
for this rook. I'll trade this queen for this queen. And I still have a queen and two pieces. And then I'll checkmate him. So that's my plan now. But I made one more mistake. So here I'm offering a trade of queens. Instead, I should have still tried to checkmate him. There's nothing wrong with my move, but the, the, I have to remember, uh, whoops, uh, I don't know what happened here. Let me just get back to that position. Uh, get, get there real quickly. So my move was correct. My strategy is correct, which is to trade off pieces so that all he's left with is a king and some pawns. And I could then, e I have no worries. I could easily checkmate him. But I missed one important thing, which has to, less to do with the moves than um, something else. So here we are. And I realized we're playing a timed game. So we started off, I forgot to mention that. We started off, each side had three minutes to make all their moves. If you don't win in three minutes, you, you lose the game. It's, you, you, you run out of time and you lose the game. So mm. I forgot all of that. He has almost a minute left. Here's his time, 55 seconds left. I have seven seconds left. And, 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 I, need, and I just gave up on the strategy of trying to checkmate him for this longer term winning plan. How am I going to win in seven seconds? So I got scared. I made a, a huge blunder, which is that I just gave him my queen that I had worked so hard to win. And so now I have exactly seven seconds. I just gave up a queen and I, and I still want to win. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm only going to play one game with, Ma with Magnus's strategy so I could show you for this lesson how yeah. it works when a player <laughs> like me. So I'm going to lose on time potentially. So uh, I just have to think, like, how can I put together in seven seconds, now six seconds, a strategy that wins? So I had no idea what to do. Um, but that, now I have a plan. So my plan is, and again, it's a bad plan, but I'm going to put my pieces into such a configuration that maybe I could checkmate him. So I check with the knight. I have four seconds left. He has 43 seconds left. I move my pawn here to protect the knight. If, any, if, if anything attacks this knight, the pawn protects the knight. And then he makes a losing move. He does this because he's trying to make me lose on time. He sees also the time situation. And then I check, king here, checkmate. So it's just about every moment adapting plans, but turning strength into strength. So, um, and even though none of my moves were bad, I, I forgot the time situation. The game situation itself was bad for me because of the time. Yeah. And it also, I mean, you can see how it affects your, um, the decisions, like as you're coming up to the end. Right. And all this is related to business. Like if you, if you have a, uh, let's say you have a product deadline, you're supposed to launch a product uh, tomorrow, but you're way behind. You might not release as good a product. It affects the quality of the product that you're trying to release when your time yeah. is scarce. So, and all of these things, again, were examples of having a bad plan is better than no plan at all. The, the other lesson was when your opponent's pieces can't move, like in the, the Magnus game, um, uh, uh, like in the Magnus game, when Magnus got into this situation where none of his opponent's pieces, I'll just get quickly to it. None of his pieces can move here. None of Black's pieces can move. So Magnus says, okay, I don't have to checkmate so fast. I don't even have to think about it. I'm not going to waste my time thinking about it. I'm just yeah, going to improve. It's like he, um, I don't know, just looking at what you've shown me so far, it's kind of like he faked an attack and it was a bad one. And then, the other player kind of made yeah. the rest of the decisions. Yeah, and right. And actually, it, it, at this point, he has a good attacking plan. He probably even has checkmate right here somewhere. But he just says, ah, I don't want any worries. I'm going to just improve my position. Why, why should he? I yeah, because none of the pieces can move. Let the other team I mean, spread themselves. It, Black's position is so bad, he, the only move he can come up with is that, which is that has a zero meaning. There's zero value to that move. So, okay, White says, oh, I don't need to attack yet. I'll just invade. I'll just improve that position of the rook. I'm going to bring that rook closer to the king. And now the king tries to run away. And Black said, and actually, according to the computer, let's look at the computer here. Uh, 
the computer actually does not like this move that Magnus did. But Magnus's whole philosophy is, what's Black going to do? He can't do anything. So I'm going to bring all of my pieces. Before I try to attack, I'm going to bring all of my pieces into the game. Why not? There is no penalty for bringing all my pieces in the game. And then, and then he gets a winning advantage, and then he just tries to trade off Rooks. And then Black is so flustered by how he's so dominated that he blunders checkmate, even though he's a grandmaster level player. Huh. So it's just, I think this is a, other people might not think this is a fascinating game because the, it was so odd, like for a world champion to play these two or three moves in the beginning is so odd that it doesn't look interesting well, to study. Just, um, well, what do you think? Magnus was thinking that it would put, I don't know who, who his opponent was, but it would put them off off their game if he did something young right he figured he figured at the very least and we saw this in the beginning and this might even not even be so obvious the first time someone looks at this game but he right from the beginning every move has a deep logical plan but black's moves while good and solid do not have do not have any plan and uh it, that's very important to even have a bad plan otherwise white keeps executing his bad plan and by the time black finally understands what's happening he's made all these good moves but he had no plan it's too late to stop magnus's plan from happening yeah and then and then at the critical moment you know magnus accordingly switches plans like you know uh uh black made this weak move here so magnus said huh well i wasn't going to bring my queen out but now a queen in two moves the first time the queen comes out, it checks the king and sets up the eventual win of this rook. And so, again, part of a deep logical plan because it's one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So finally, this rook, which came out because of the queen, the, is finally taken. So like yeah. seven or eight moves later, the yeah. results of the queen's one move is results in a, a in a winning position for now finally the computer says oh magnus is mag massively winning so that's the example of why a having a bad plan is better than no plan at all and b when you've gotten your other then the other side is can't do anything instead of still attacking magnus just defends and improves his pieces because black can't improve his pieces. So every move is, is better for white to just improve his pieces before he attacks. Just like, just like over here, he gets, he could have maybe checkmated, but instead he said, you know what? I'm going to get my final piece into the game. And now all of his pieces are going to attack, even though that was not his best move, according to the computer. It's better to have a philosophy and a plan even a bad plan, then well, and and stick to it too. It looks and like stick, he, be consistent. Yes, right. Because he could have started with a bad plan and then failed. Right, and, <laughs> and like to stick to the idea of getting. It looks like what he was really trying to do was get his rooks into the game early. Yeah, he was trying to get his rooks into the game early, which is a bad plan. Like that is always a bad plan um, because the rooks, you know, don't belong. The rooks work well at the end of the game, not in the opening, because it's too easy to, they're too bulky. They can't really, they're not nimble. Well, you can take them out with pawns and with uh, bishops. Right. It's like, it's like, right, exactly. It's like right. a billionaire trying to buy microcap stocks. Yeah. A billionaire is too bulky to get in and out of microcap stocks. That's yeah. the same thing. And so eventually that, it's a, that's a useless strategy for a billionaire. This is technically a useless strategy for, for white, for, for Magnus here. But because Black didn't understand what was happening, and he thought, oh, if I just make good moves, I'll beat Magnus's bad moves. He wasn't thinking in terms of philosophies and plans. And even in my game, you know, I couldn't execute exactly Magnus's plans because the pawns were getting in my way. But I just try to make things confusing, as confusing as possible. And I ended up with this weird structure where we, we tr traded off all these pieces. But now I have a winning game because he can't stop my pawns from queening. So uh, the same kind of approach. I had a plan and then I had to adapt a couple of times, but, and we both made mistakes. But you still like, had to stick with the plan. 
yeah, I still was consistent and black couldn't, couldn't stop me. And then even when I had a, never a, you start a game, like if you're not on that path and then, then you're beholden to the other players moves and that would be, that makes it difficult because if you don't start with the, the strategy, then you're playing defense the whole time. Right. And, and actually all you're waiting for at that point is for them to make a mistake. Right. And, and, and that's a, you know, as we say in investing, hope is a bad strategy. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, at the same time, you have to be able to adapt, but you always want to go from strength to strength even when you adapt plans, even when you change plans and you always want to go from one plan to another, just not make move by move, but you have to think in terms of what are, what are the ideas? What are the philosophies behind each move? So, and this applies to anything. Imagine if you're looking, you're single and you, and you want to get married and you're looking for a spouse, no plan might be just sitting at home and waiting for a friend to call you and say, I want you to meet somebody. A bad plan might be going to bars and asking out girls uh, and hoping you'll meet the one in a, in a random bar, in a random pickup. And a good plan might be looking at your friends who are happily married, asking them, you know, what's the secret to your success? And then maybe you write down qualities you want to have in a mate. And then you find people with those qualities or you think has those qualities and you go on dates and you learn about them. And so that's a good plan. But even a bad plan of going out and trying to meet people is better than just no plan, which is just yeah. sitting at home. It sounds to me like the bad plan is the better plan in that scenario. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, what's a like? Let's say you're a real estate agent. Okay, a bad a no plan is you get your real estate license and you hope that one of your friend call, friends calls you and says, "Hey, I'm looking to buy a home. Can you help me?" A bad plan is mailing brochures to all your neighbors and hoping that one of them wants to buy a home. A good plan might be, hey, let's make YouTube videos of the area where I live. Let's use social media and and because no other real estate agents doing that. And let's, uh, uh, you know, try to get clients by showing how, what an expert I am of the area, spreading the word, uh, using social media and then getting clients that way. So that's a good plan. And again, bad plan which is sending brochures is better than just sitting at home waiting for your friends to call. Yeah. So it, is, it applies in every part of life. And then if you have a strong position, let's say you already have a good YouTube channel showing off that, the, that your skills in real estate, your opponents are doing nothing. You're, you're the other real estate agents. Okay. Let's just, without do, spending so much money, let's just improve the quality of my videos. Let's make strong incremental improvements to my plan and, and because my opponents are doing nothing. And so all these things, uh, that's why chess, I think, is a great metaphor for life. All the yeah, basic principles are... The too is that the sort of mental acuity plays out across the board. It plays out in every decision that you make. Yeah, which is, you so know... You kind of like figure out what's the bad plan. That's, a, that's actually a good idea. Yeah, and all, all of the, the bad plan. <laughs> well, well, sometimes figuring out the b bad plan, like you say, might be a good plan because it confuses the other side. But technically, <clears throat> Magnus should have lost that game. He was massively losing. He should well, have he lost. Have gotten crushed early, but he didn't. And and I should have lost this game. I should have been destroyed this game. And instead, it was confusing enough. I mean, this is a position, a ki kind of thing. You would never see these two pawns here so quickly. And Black just, and we're playing a speed game. So Black just didn't yeah, know what to do. That wasn't something I was aware of, but that, that changes things also. It might have even impacted them. Yeah, like, like it did because like, I didn't even realize until this point, I looked down and I'm like, oh my God, I have seven seconds left. He has 55 seconds left. I don't have, I don't feel like I have enough pieces to quickly check me. Plus I was flustered. So Sounds I didn't like know what to do. Stoppage time in a soccer match. <laughs> yeah. Like I, yeah. If I could have called I like, we have 37 seconds left, but, but here I got so flustered that I immediately made a mistake too. So now my plan has to be just, I just got to confuse this guy as quickly as possible. And, and I did. And then he didn't realize there was a check. He was just trying to get me to lose four seconds. And in those 
it took three seconds to figure this out, but I finally checkmated him. Mm. So I had to switch game strategies because not because of the position, but because of the time. So, um, and that's, how was that as a chess lesson examining crazy opening by Magnus that turned out to be more meaningful than people think. And then, you know, looking at as looking far at as the chess lesson goes, um, it was a lot to chew on for me because I think my, I'm, I'm realizing my level of strategy is pretty rudimentary. <laughs> when I, when I play chess, I'm like, okay, I move this thing over here. And then I, if I'm good, I can, I can plan two steps ahead. But that's okay though. Like in the sense that, uh, even seeing two steps ahead, if they all fit a cohesive plan, you can make those two moves knowing at the very least you stuck with your plan. If you can't see a few steps ahead and you have no plan, then you're just moving around mindlessly. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so oh, it, yesterday we were talking about tennis too. That's the way I feel in tennis. Like I can plan a couple shots ahead in tennis. And if I don't do that, then I just get crushed. <laughs> Yeah, and, and we talked about how in doubles, you you always hit, the two sides hit cross court to each other yeah. until finally one side feels that they have a strong enough, you know, maybe you threw off the your opponents with one move that was a little Out bit. Or something, yeah. Yeah, and so then you could decide, is now the time to attack or are they a little thrown off that mm. maybe I throw them a little more off? I make a a slightly different move that just puts them even more on their toes. And you could do that as long as possible. And then finally you make the crushing, you know, slam or whatever you take the risk. Yeah. You hope that they pop it up so you can. Right. Which eventually they'll have to do. You yeah. put so much of a squeeze on them eventually. Or they do that to you. That's the other thing that happens. You do all that planning and then sometimes it happens to you and it, in a way that you don't expect. So you end up popping it up and getting slammed. <laughs> and so what might you do if you're on the defense? What's a good offensive strategy? If you feel they're throwing you, they're hitting it sharper and sharper and you're a little bit off your feet and a little slower to getting back to the ball now, uh, what do you do if you're trying to um, uh, get get back into well, the Well, I think it's point. very similar to what you're talking about in, in this game. If you feel like you're losing and you're in a defensive position, you literally want to um get them off the court so you you pop it up as high as possible i mean that's what i do and just give yourself time to get back into a better position and you know if you're if you're good at it maybe the ball goes in a part of the court that's difficult for them to to hit back right so you you're, completely you just stabilize the the point and then and then they have to recover. So you 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 do exactly what you've been talking about. You you actually make it more difficult for them to execute the plan that they had. Right. So you completely change and then everybody the structure. Has to be set at that point. Right. Right. You completely instead of just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until they slam on you, and you as you get weaker and weaker, yeah. you completely change the structure of yeah. the game. And you might even be worse off because you popped it up. So they might be, if you did it wrong, they'll slam it at you and yeah, win. Which happens. Right. But the but, thing you can do too is you, instead of going cross court, which I, I just don't like, literally when we go cross court, I feel like it's a competition between who is more consistent with their backhand or their forehand or whatever. Like if the ball is just going back and forth, I would rather change it up and go down the line. Even if I miss, I would rather – change the point in that way so that the expectation of the cross court thing is not happening anymore. Like I want to break that first. Right. This is like, <laughs> and I might actually lose because I hit it out or, or my attempt to go down the line misses and the, the person who I'm hitting towards can just put it away. But I would rather do that than, then just go back and forth until somebody is not like the skill level isn't there enough to keep it going. <laughs> right. And I think this is a critical strategic point. Like your best move in tennis might be 
just hit it back cross court, which is the normal strategy. But yeah, you make right. a weaker move. Yeah, I mean, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. You, you, you make a weaker move in order to change the structure of the gate of, of the point. Yeah. And, and you hope it changes the structure enough that it throws them off what their strategy was. And then you win. And more, maybe many times you lose, but you would have lost anyway if you kept making the best move and they just kept overpowering you and right. then they slam it on you. Like that would have been making the best move in that, in that case would have been a losing strategy as opposed to transforming the, what the structure of yeah, the point looks like. So that I guess even skill wise, the decision to push that, you know, to disrupt the point, it matters because there's a point that you get to in each point that you have to decide whether you're going to do that any longer, but also you have to have the skill to, to make it happen. Like if I choose to disrupt the point, if I don't have the skill to carry it off, like my, the decision that I made to go down the line, for example, and I miss, then <laughs> That's the risk that I take. And I guess that's really what happens is sometimes you just lose because you take the risk and it, and it doesn't work. Yeah. And, you know, think about it in business. Let's say you have a product and, uh, uh, you know, like Steve Jobs, when he started Next Machine, Next Computers in the 90s, he had a great product. But, but other computer companies were beating him in competition, like Sun Microsystems and IBM and so on. So he changed the structure of yeah. Yeah. the business. He sold it to Apple, which was at that time a, a business about to go bankrupt. And that could have been a losing strategy for him. But he used, he, everybody got flustered enough that, and he used his own genius to use that transformation of the game to have a winning position and put all these other companies out of business instead. I'm trying to think of, there's plenty of business examples like that where, oh, I have the- yeah, I mean, look at uh, Amazon too. Like, like Bezos changed the game. Yeah. And look, Barnes and Noble, they didn't, they, they, they should have maybe They're transformed maybe. their business somehow. Maybe yeah. they should have bought Amazon early on or something, but they didn't and they lost. So, yeah. so not transforming, but still making the best moves could be a losing strategy when someone else is winning. So even if you make the best moves, if you're losing, you'll just start losing more by making the best moves. So it's funny. Um, but all right, that was the, the Magnus's insane openings. Part one, we look yes. at a four. And yeah, I wonder what's going to happen when we look at another game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have I have one prepared, but that'll be that'll be next time. Yeah. So right. when, when you're up we'll for another lesson, more we'll make it happen. Just lessons. <laughs> yes. All right. All cool. Right. Thanks a lot, Addison. I will All talk right. to you soon. See you. Okay. Bye.